The Jacksonville Historical Society. Preserving your city's history. Protecting your city's treasures. Advocating the restoration of Jacksonville landmarks. Archiving a century of historical documents. Collecting rare photographs. Tens of thousands. Creating the Merrill Museum House, piece by piece. Restoring Old St. Andrew's Church. Receiving Florida Historical Society's top honors. Publishing historical books. Elegantly crafted. Producing video histories. Dramatically told. Educating our citizens for decades. Enlightening the generations to come. Sponsoring tonight's special television presentation. And offering you the opportunity to become a part of Jacksonville history. Call 665-0064. Visit jackshistory.com and become a member of the Jacksonville Historical Society. Celebrating 80 years serving our community. Hello and welcome back to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Emily Rutherford Liska, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society. And I'm here with Lauren Swain Mosley, who's the archivist for the Jacksonville Historical Society. And we're here to show you uh, what we collect for the archival repository at the Jacksonville Historical Society, or just a smattering of what we collect, and tell you that arguably collecting Jacksonville his, Jacksonville's history mm -hmm. is really the most important thing the Jacksonville Historical Society does. It is. Our archives are really um, a repository for all kinds of um, objects, newspapers, letters, um, all sorts of things from Jacksonville history. And uh, it's really the important thing that researchers go to when they're writing books about Jacksonville. Um, go to the primary sources. And that's really what we primarily collect here. And we do, and we have a lot of collections that are rare. That's what you go for, one of a kind we collections. Do, yes. And um, let's show people just some examples of what might be found in the collections at the Jacksonville Historical Society repository. Sure, absolutely. Um, we have a, a variety of uh, types of collections mm -hmm. laid out here, um, including some, uh, when we have a scrapbook, it's actually sort of a photo album scrapbook hybrid. And I just want to add while you're showing this, we're not dressed as though we're going downtown in 1960 no. with these gloves. Yes. We actually have on gloves because we're Archival, yeah, archival, yeah, archival gloves. gloves. Yes, in order to touch these wonderfully old objects. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is an example of the album. A lot of the older objects, things are um, a little bit damaged on them. Like in this case, we've got a, a broken spine in this book, but it's actually a photograph book um, by um, photographer. Yes, yeah, so a photographer. The right? Kellogg is the last name. Still doing mm -hmm. some research, trying to figure Which out Kellogg? <laughs> exactly who it was. Right, it may be a set of brothers, but we're not sure. Um, so the pages in this actually can just come right out. I'm not actually damaging the book by picking this up, but um, this is a um, a series of photographs, just as an interesting example, um, that show uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe's house down in Mandarin, which is very rare to have photographs of her home. Original, um, exactly. Original, original photographs. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, whoever this Kellogg. Uh, person was, photographers, They this was the way that they designed the album to go. We actually have um, these four uh, just in this book as an example, and then on the next page we have a few more. And this album was actually given to the Jacksonville Historical Society back in the 1940s. Yes, by um, Judge George Cooper Gibbs, who was related to Zephaniah Kingsley, who most of you probably know about. Um, and uh, yes, so we've had it in our collection quite some time, and all the items have been digitized, which is another thing that we try to do in the archives is um, get things digitized so people don't actually have to touch the original item and potentially cause further damage. And this Kellogg photo album also includes photographs of downtown Jacksonville in the 1970s. Does. 1870s. Oh, excuse yes. me, 1870s, oh gracious. <laughs> yes, I should mention oh, that, but this is from you. the 1870s, so it's quite old. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty rare for us to have photos from that time period anyway, mm -hmm. but to have a whole collection specifically focusing on Northeast Florida is very exciting. Um, yeah, it goes in, down into St. Augustine as well, but all throughout the St. John's River, and um, has some very, very interesting, unique photos in here. So that's one example, yes. an old photo album we might yes, collect. Now let's look at album. another example. Um, we also uh, collect a lot of letters, or it's something that we strive to collect. We have, we're lucky to have a pretty large collection of letters. Um, I brought with me an example here of um, the, uh, what's really the Mary Graff collection, but it's a uh, donated by Mary Graff, and that's what we call it, it's the Mary Graff collection. And she was a social studies teacher here in, in Jacksonville. Correct. 
and she uh, and she wrote Mandarin on the same that's tongue. right yes. and so she saved many yes. letters and um, the the letters are actually from a family that lived um, down in an area of Mandarin that they called Pleasant Point um, and it's uh, like I said, down in Mandarin, these letters are mostly from uh, beginning in 1867. There's some from the 1850s, but most of them are from the 1860s up until around the 1890s. And um, they're of the Huntington family. Uh, the Huntingtons are actually from New York. And um, Elon Huntington, he was one of the found founders of Rochester University in New York. And um, so these letters are from essentially the son came down to Mandarin to start an orange grove and the family the parents came down afterwards and this letter I just love it it uh, talks a lot about when the mother um, gets down there her name was uh, a AC is what she went by uh, when she gets down to uh, Mandarin she talks about how her son doesn't have proper plates and things like that and so she goes into Jacksonville and gets Bastille. plates yes Bastille. it was a long trip oh, from sailing Jacksonville boat. sailing boat didn't she that's right she takes this one particular trip that's described in this letter she goes by sailing boat and um, at the end after she buys the plates that her son is missing from the house she um, talks about coming back down the river and the sails don't work so she actually uh, steers the ship something she would never have done uh, up in New York and she's just so excited talking about it how she uses the stars to navigate it's a very sort of moving letter because you can see this um, very sort of socialite woman from New York uh, her family her, her husband and she were very well off and here she was steering a boat in rural Florida down a mm -hmm. river you know just really so enjoying very, the environment and exactly. the land and they, they certainly the people who settled here for the winters and they did right. settle they just loved the environment and our St. John's. Yes. So but now what yeah, else that's you another want to example. Show us? Um we also uh, well similar to the Kellogg album, which is more of a photo album than a scrapbook, we do collect um, quite a few scrapbooks from local groups as well. Um, this example here is just a press book from the nineteen seventies oh. from the oh the last thing you want the public to yes. see is you <laughs> plunge their collections to the floor. It was just a folder. It was okay. <laughs> um, it's a scrapbook from the 70s from the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Jacksonville chapter. We have quite a large collection from them. Um, and uh, actually, I don't know, uh, we've, we've sort of been highlighting some women in this uh, segment today. So um, Harry Beecher Stowe's house, and actually the woman who wrote the, the letter I just talked about, she um, was a friend of Harry Beecher Stowe. They were in communication. So we're, uh, for Women's History Month, trying to highlight some women mm -hmm. here. So hence the DAR album. And this is just a, an example of the types of scrapbooks that we have. Some of them have photos. Some of them have newspaper clippings in them. Um, and it really gives a good history of the uh, the group year by year, very detailed history that they would have created themselves. Um, this is another thing from the um, the DAR collection. It's a membership roster from about 1899 to 1900 is when it pretty much goes up to those two years. But it's interesting because it's pre Great Fire, which happened in May of 1901, and um, it's just a fascinating if you're doing um, any research on your ancestors or the types of activities, social activities that people would have done in Jacksonville at that time. Uh, these are very good resources for that sort of thing. And a thing. couple other women's collections we have, the Jacksonville Women's Club. We have the Jacksonville Women's Club. Collection. It is. It's and, about... Uh, and we also Jack, Jacksonville Women's Network. Now yes. we're getting toward the end of our segment, yes. and not so much a woman's collection, but a collection women love. Women love. Yes. And this involves Cohen Brothers Department Store, and Cohen Brothers Department Store certainly uh, they employed a lot of women. They were uh, certainly a place where women uh, spent a lot of time in Jacksonville, Florida. We'll start with one shot. And I'm going to try to move through these, and I think I'm going to do it poorly. As Lauren pointed out to me, I'm going to put these down <laughs> a little bit. It's tougher to work with the gloves the than without. The gloves, yeah. Oh, this is really going to be a little disastrous, It's hard Lauren. to pull the papers But apart. as we move through, here we'll come to get to another one. I apologize. This shows women mm -hmm. who are, of course, hard at work in at Cohen Brothers Department Store. Mm -hmm. Now we move to the next one. Of this course, this is one of our most popular photos. Very I love popular it. photo. I love it. The employees really uh, had a lot of activities. Were very social, and these were some of the female employees at the time down on the beach. And you can just see the camaraderie and the love mm -hmm. they had for each other and their their work. Uh, this, of course, is Cohen Brothers, roughly in the 
40s probably here and it shows the parking ground parking right across the, yes. the street from Cohen Brothers and we're moving on to another as they held a seminar for women this is mm -hmm. down in the famous basement of the Cohen Brothers department store and one final shot if my archival gloves will let me show <laughs> this is really a hoot you're gonna have there a lot we go. of you got it oh, oh I do there we go and <laughs> this is uh, roughly in the 50s uh, maybe early 60s I may have a date on this one and mm -hmm. this shows the second floor where so many women would uh, seek you know their outfits and their clothing right. and their their wardrobes at Cohen Brothers department so we have yes. a great in fact our Cohen Brothers collection uh, more than 200 images Absolutely. we have a very large photograph collection which is another type of thing that we collect and also of the have Cohen Brothers. paper collection yes. in Cohen Brothers we have a very neat um, album with all of the internal newsletters from the 1920s from the Cohen Brothers which is fitting because this is the hundredth anniversary of that department store exactly. now its evolution is Belk at this right, point exactly well it's been fun to have you here. Oh, we have to wonderful. have you back, Lauren. Yes, absolutely. And for more information about the Jacksonville Historical Society archives, how you can give to the collection, mm -hmm. how you can use the collection, please give us a call, www.jackshistory.com or at 665-0064. And for now, <laughs> we're history. Thanks again. You're welcome. Thank you.